Sir Handel's final scheme. The Finn controller, Mr. Percival, was concerned for Duke. The former mid Sodor Railway's number one and the pride of the line was beginning to tire out. Duke had had every rebuild and overhaul given to him, but nothing had worked. It left Mr. Percival to make a very tough decision. I'm sorry, Duke, he said. I'm afraid we're going to have to send you to a mainland railway where they can take better care of you. It will mean, though, you will not be coming home to my railway. I understand, sir, said Duke with a wheeze. But I want you to know, Mr. Percival added, you have made my railway proud, and I'm sure that Peter Sam and Sir Handel will wish you luck with your future. Duke felt very doubtful. The next morning, Henry arrived with a flat truck and crane to take Duke away. The little engines were sorry to see him go. They would never again have Grandpa work on their railway. As Mr. Percival expected, Peter Sam and Sir Handel were hit hard with Duke's departure. They had worked with him on the mid Sodor back when they were known as Stuart and Falcon. Peter Sam bustled into Crovensgate Station, where a very smug looking James waited for him. Old Grandpa crossed off then? he asked. I'm not in the mood, huffed Peter Sam. Well, I can see your rain of sunshine today, chuckled James. How's the handle getting on? Peter Sam gritted his teeth. Sir Handel was the last engine he wanted to think about. Now, it took a couple of days for Peter Sam to get over that Duke had gone, but Sir Handel was furious. Ever since Duke had left, Sir Handel had kicked up quite a storm. He refused to do his work, he argued with the bigger engines, particularly Gordon from past experiences, and even tried to give George the Steamroller a bit of lip from their last encounter. The other little engines even joked he was complaining more than Duncan, who didn't take kindly to the gesture. Eventually, Sir Handel was beginning to lose patience. He started to blame the Finn controller for sending Duke away, when he knew that many repairs could have been done. He decided to come up with one last scheme to try and get his way. But how exactly he was going to do it was going to be quite a shock. That afternoon, Sir Handel was taken sightseers to the green. Edward, who had brought Sir Handel's passengers to the station, had kept respectfully silent when the little engine had fussed away. As they headed towards the green, Sir Handel felt very clever. He had felt something rattle on the way up and was determined to deliberately shake it loose. He had just climbed the hill when it happened. Let's see what the Fin Controller thinks of this now, he roared. Sir Handel jerked forward. The coaches wailed. Oh! They groaned. Sir Handel's jitter had done the trick. It had been his safety valve that had come loose, and the jolt was enough to cause it to go off. Sir Handel came to a stop just at the crest of the green. His crew were not happy. You silly engine, they scolded. We're going to have to get help now. The passengers, however, weren't too fussed. They climbed out of the coaches and explored the green, but they knew they'd have to have another engine to take them home. Before long, Scar Lowy and Rusty arrived. Scar Lowy took over the train, while Rusty took Sir Handel back to the yard. Mr. Percival was waiting for them. Thank you, Rusty. That'll be all, he said. Rusty quickly departed as Mr. Percival stared angrily at Sir Handel. Your behaviour these past few days has been inexcusable, the Finn controller rapped. I know you're upset that Duke is not here anymore, but you can't go around with a bad attitude. Sir Handel couldn't find the words to express himself, but he needn't bother. 
There's only one place I can send engines who don't do as they're told, said Mr. Percival. I am sending you to the stone quarry. Perhaps your time there and only silly trucks for company will change your ways. I will not have rudeness and disrespect on my railway. And with that, Mr. Percival turned sharply on his heel and walked away. Peter Sam was distraught when he learned what happened to Sir Handel. But over time, the little engines almost forgot about him. They had their own adventures. Scar Lowy had conquered an old bridge. Reneus had delivered the skeleton of a dinosaur. Peter Sam had learned of the story of Proteus and his magic lamp. Rusty had been caught up with a boulder. And Duncan had encountered a ghost on the old iron bridge. But the little engines knew that soon Sir Handel would come home and... But I mustn't tell you any more. But I think you all know what happened when Sir Handel did come home from the stone quarry.